Let's talk about three great options. We're talking about LI, social finance, and we're talking about Wealthfront. Which of these organizations is for you? Now, here is a secret that I haven't shared with anyone and that I haven't seen any other people that review or that provide insight on high yield savings accounts do. Now, this is what personal high yield savings account checklist that feel free to screenshot this, to share this video with somebody. If I were to use a high yield savings account now, these are all the requirements that I will pay attention to when choosing an organization. We're talking about high competitive interest, no monthly fees, easy access, no minimum deposit required, withdrawal limits. We're talking about also good interface with the website. You don't want to deal with something that is clunky, that is slow, hard to use. You also, I personally want to use cost human customer service, not just talk to a bot, no funny footnotes. Also got to be careful with the brand that is offering the high yield savings account, because there's a lot of banks out there that just provide a high interest rate just to get you hooked. But then a few weeks later, or maybe even a few days later, they just lower the interest rate. I've heard stories like this. So we got to be careful with the brands that we start associating ourselves with when it comes to our hard earned money. And of course, at the end of the day, the bottom line is going to be what organization really gives you the warm and fuzzy feeling, the feeling of confidence and comfort whenever you park your money somewhere. So these are all the requirements that we're going to be going over in the next couple of slides and the perspective from which I come when I compare these organizations. All right. So with all that being said, Let's start talking about the elephant in the room, which is one of the main indicators as of, at least for me, as of whether or not I even consider a, an organization for a high yield savings account. Now, when it comes to that, these three options, we have LI coming last at 4.35%. Then we have SoFi at 4.6%. And there's a little star here that we're going to go over here, these details in a second. And then we also have Wealthfront. Wealthfront comes on top here by far, all, by far if you compare it to NLI and very close to SoFi. It's at 5%, which is very good if you ask me. That's one of the highest interest rates that I've seen in the ones that I've reviewed and the ones that I've seen. And there's a little start here that I want to focus just for a few seconds when it comes to SoFi, because in order to qualify for the APY that SoFi is offering, you do need to set up direct deposit. And SoFi explains that on their website. And if it's for you, if you qualify, which we're going to go over those details in a second, then it's great. You're good to go. Now let's talk about something that entices all new customers and me included. For example, do these organizations offer an opening account bonus? Do you get any extra cash? Do you get any incentives for opening an account with this organization? Now, Ally, as far as I saw, I was doing a lot of research on this. They don't offer for the specifically for the high yield savings account. They don't offer any, they don't give you any extra APY. They don't give you any extra cash bonuses. Unlike SoFi, which comes on top here, if you compare these three organizations, SoFi comes up on top because they offer you a bonus of up to $325. How you qualify for this? This is very important. So once you open an account with SoFi, you do have to set up the right deposit in order to get a 4.6 APY and if you if your direct deposit is between five one and five thousand dollars, you get fifty dollars as a bonus. Now you do get the big money. With big money comes big responsibility. You do get three hundred dollar bonus if your direct deposit is five thousand dollars or more. So you just want to make sure that you qualify for these because you don't want to open an account and then later on you're blindsided and say, oh my god, I didn't get my bonus. Well, you didn't qualify. So I'm being very transparent here. You got to make sure that you qualify for the bonus of $325. Now, Wealthfront takes a little different approach, which is the approach of the, another organization that I personally bank with. And that is, hey, they give you an extra 0.5% APY. What they do is, for instance, if the interest rate right now is five for Wealthfront, you would earn a 5.5 bonus if you sign up with a link to Wealthfront. So that's an account bonus. That's something that's an incentive. At least it's something. And of course, the more money you have, the little 0.5% turns into that much more money. So these are the account bonuses perspective and things to take into account to entice you, to give you a little bit more motivation and to attract new customers. Now, 
something very important and something that I suggest and that no one banks with an organization that is not FDIC insured. And keep in mind, there are certain private organizations that are not FDIC insured. So all of these organizations are insured. LI goes is very standard up to $250,000 per account and per, per account per user. SoFi does something funny as well as Wealthfront, but Wealthfront takes it to a whole new level. Now, SoFi, by using a network of federally insured banks as well, FDIC insured banks, they can offer you, they can offer you a insurance up to $2 million. So SoFi takes your money and they distribute it among all these other banks that are also FDIC insured. So they can tell you, hey, if you give me $2 million, I can, I can insure you up to that much. Now, Wealthfront uses the same strategy, same philosophy, but they take it on steroids, right? They go up to $8 million. If you have that much money, I'm not sure why you would put it in a savings account, but they give you the option in case you want to go that route. No judgment here. All right, so now moving on, let's talk about minimum deposit and maintenance fees. Now these two requirements right here, these two categories can make or break my personal decision to bank with an organization. Because if, you, if you're gonna charge me maintenance fees, if you're gonna have a minimum deposit, I'll have nothing to do with you. I don't wanna be with you. I just, please just back it up. Let's go look somewhere else. Minimum deposit for all these organizations is zero, no minimum deposit. Now with SoFi, it's a little different because they do say, yeah, okay, you don't have to have a certain minimum deposit to start banking with us. However, you do need a direct deposit to get the APY, at which point the minimum deposit then becomes whatever your direct deposit is in order to qualify for the APY. So they don't tell you straight up, you do need a minimum deposit, but as long as you set up your direct deposit with SoFi, then you are good to go. Now, the good thing about all these organizations is that they don't have any maintenance fees. You don't want to get charged a fee, let's say $15 fee on a monthly basis for your savings account when your interest is only, let's say $7 or $20, $30. So the interest or the fees just end up eating up the any earnings that you may have with your savings account. All right. As always, of course, check the website for the latest information, but a lot of these features will remain the same with the exception of the interest rates. Of course, we can change at any time. All right. So now let's talk about the next feature comparison here. And we're talking about account access. Now account access is very important because let's say you need cash for a certain emergency that comes up and Ally offers account access online. All of these organizations are online. There are online high yield savings accounts and Ally and SoFi do offer you ATM access to your cash through, they have a network of ATMs, so they have an agreement with a certain company. So they do offer you ATM access, which personally, for me, it's a great perk. Depending on your personality, depending on how you use your savings account, it could be a disadvantage. But if you are someone that says, I don't want easy access to my savings account because I know that I am going to end up spending my savings, which trust me, I've been there in the past, no judgment here. You want to have your money with a little bit of a barrier so that you don't have easy access to it. Now, when it comes to making deposits, however, Ally and SoFi, they offer you the standard bank transfer, the direct deposit. You can do wire transfers. You can mail checks to Ally. You can also use cash through the ATM. So you can go to the ATM and deposit cash to your savings account. And on the case of Wellfront, however, they do bank transfer, direct deposit, wire transfer, and all of these organizations, of course, also offer you e-check deposit, which to me is huge because it's very simple to just take a picture of the check, you sign it, you take a picture of it, and boom, you put it into your account. Now, let's talk about something that is about all about convenience. And we're talking about having a check-in and online savings account all in one place. Now, all of these organizations do offer you check-in and savings accounts. And in the case of SoFi and Wealthfront, they offer you a lot more also in case you're interested in investing options or investing tools, et cetera. So all in one, checking and savings, all three of them. So it's basically a wash and it's all tied from that category. All right. So now let's talk about X factors and 
things that I personally, if you are still a little bit on the edge, if you're a little bit, ah, man, like this, all these things great. Like, well, I don't know which one to go with yet. So let's talk about branding and branding. Remember I told you a little while ago when I talked about the little warm and fuzzy feeling that an organization gives you, this is the branding and the establishment and how stable a certain organization, at least from the outside seems for its client. So Ally, Ally is a well-established brand. Ally itself, the subsidiary was established back in 2009. I remember when it was first established and it was like, it was, it was, everybody was talking about that. And like, oh my God, high yield savings. I think at the time the savings account had an APR, an APY of, I think it was like 3% at the time, like back then, which was, uh, it, it was good. It was great. Now, Ally, interestingly enough, was formerly known as GMAC. Ally, it's backed by Ally Financial, which was founded in 1919, formerly known as GMAC. Now, so far in Wellfront are somewhat new organizations that are on the come up. They are gaining their reputation. If you compare it, of course, to something that was founded back in 1919, over a hundred years ago, then these two organizations are somewhat new. So so SoFi stands for social finance. And, and this was established by four bros at Stanford back in 2011. And when it comes to Wellfront, however, they were established back in 2008, and it was a platform designed mainly for investing. It's artificial intelligence based. A lot of the advertisement and a lot of the reputation that this organization has, it's almost like a robo advisor. And I was reading a little bit about the history of Wellfront and the people that founded it, they wanted easy investing tools and options for its users. So Wellfront, is established and is designed with an investor's perspective and investor and making investment tools available for the average person, for the average user like you and I. So it just really depends on what you're looking for. It depends on which one tells you deep down, oh, I like SoFi, oh, I like Ally, I like Wellfront. So it's all going to depend on how you feel for your own interests and needs. Now let's move on. Let's talk about withdrawal limits per month. Now, this is something that we need to be paying attention to because Ally recently changed it from six per month to now they offer up to 10 withdrawals per month. I don't know if they got any backlash. I don't know if they <laughs> got any complaints from customers. So 10 withdrawals per month, SoFi and Wellfront, they have no limit on withdrawal frequency on the amount of withdrawals that you can make on your savings account. One thing I want to share here when it comes to withdrawal limits per month is there was a federal limit of six withdrawals for savings accounts. And this was regulation D by, by the government. And back in 2020, the government said, hey, you know, people need their money. People need access to their money. So we're going to be suspending this, this regulation and requirement. And now the government said, I don't care. It's unlimited. Like we don't have this regulation anymore. So now it's up to banks how much they want to let you withdraw every single month. All right, so now customer service is available for all of these organizations. Now with Wellfront, however, you do have to submit a message. I did not see a phone number that you can call, which is a little different than SoFi and Ally, which are a little bit more human based. You can talk to someone with Wellfront, as I mentioned, it's very tech heavy. So it just depends on what you want. If you want to talk to a human, then maybe SoFi or Ally would be better. Wellfront is just, you send a request and then someone gets back to you at some point. I didn't see a phone number that I can share here with you. Now, all of these organizations do have a 5.0 their nerd wallet review. All right. So which of these organizations will speak to you the most? When it comes to Ally, Ally comes a little short for my liking. It comes at 4.35%. It's a little short if you compare it to 4.6% from SoFi and also 5% for Wellfront. So that right there, to me, it would be a big indicator to start putting Ally a little bit to the side, at least for the race that we have here on the screen. Also, Ally offers no bonuses for new clients. Like there's still incentives as far as I could see. That was a little detrimental for me. But the good thing that Ally offers is no, no minimum deposit, no monthly fee. You do get the APR without a direct deposit, which is something that you do need, you do need with SoFi. And when I personally used Li a little while ago, I didn't have any problems with it. There is satisfied customers with Li, and generally speaking, the reputation that I saw online is also satisfied customers. Of course, needless to say, there's going to be people that don't like 
any of these organizations or that love them. So it all just comes down to what you need and what your experience has been with other organizations. All right. Now, when it comes to SoFi, however, SoFi does offer the competitive APY of 4.6%. That's the closest one to Wealthfront. And they offer the highest cash bonus of up to $325 right now as of January 2024. If you want to take advantage of that, check the link in the description. Also, zero minimum deposit or monthly fee. You need direct deposit to get the high APY, by the way. And of course, they do offer the high FDIC insurance of up to $2 million. Now, on the case of Wealthfront, Wealthfront comes ahead in interest. No questions asked. 5.0%. They also do offer you the 0.5% additional APY. Also, they offer the wildest FDIC insurance I have ever seen in my entire life, and that's $8 million, which is a very clever feature in my personal opinion. Now, Wealthfront, it's someone new, and it's more, it has a lot more options and tools and investing, savings, and other automated tools. It's a little bit more modern, and this brings me to my last point here. If I were to pick one, if you put a gun to my head and you tell me, Alex, Give me your best option based on your research, based on your experience, based on your read online. My first option in this specific case would be SoFi. I'm talking about the competitive APY. We're talking about a high cash bonus. And also you gotta make sure though that you meet the requirements. And personally, I also have SoFi and I haven't had any problems with it. The second option in my book would be Wealthfront. Now you might be asking, so why would you choose SoFi, which has a lower APY than Wealthfront? If you remember here for a second, SoFi has a 4.6 and Wealthfront has a 5.0. Now in my book, 4, a 0.4% is not that significant of, it's not, it's not a significant of a difference, especially because I'm not going to be depositing $5 million in my, in my savings account. So if you're depositing 10,000, 20,000, 30,000, 40, however much it is, the difference in interest rate, it's very minimal, like how much you're going to be getting paid. So just to keep things in perspective. Now, Wealthfront now offers also, it has a decent bonus of a 0.5% additional APY. It's, it's a little bit modern, more modern than the other two. That's the gut feeling that I get anyways. That's the perception that I get. New territory for me, like I've never heard of Wealthfront up to some time ago. So, but it seems like a good option. Now for this specific case, which is not a bad option, but comes last in my personal selection here is Li. The interest is just too low. It's too low at 4.36%. If you remember here, 4.35%, it's the, the gap is a little too high. So our, it maybe it's just a psychological thing at this point is like, you don't want to get something that's high way too low of an interest rate. If it's between 2 and 0.2 and 0.4%, then it's all right. It's, it's okay. But then if you go to a higher interest difference than that, then to me, it starts getting a little bit concerning. Also, there's no cash bonuses for new clients, even though I never had any problems with it, it's still better than most brick and mortar banks. So all of these organizations are great options. If you are someone that is looking to grow your money, with a high yield savings account. And if you are interested in opening a, an account with SoFi, click the link in the description. You can get up to $325 with a $5,000 plus direct deposit or $50 with the direct deposit between five, between one and $5,000. So I don't know about you, but I love free money. And with that being said, let me know which of these organizations is for you. Do you have any other ones that you're considering? Which ones are those? And let me know if you'd like to make a video about it. With that being said, guys, thanks for being here. I appreciate you. And I'll see you guys on the next one.